Protected Topics for Paper 2, AQA GCSE Chemistry Exam 2024. Some of these topics are guaranteed topics because they are always in the exam. Others are just predicted based on the fact that they haven't been in the exam lately or they are very frequent in the exam. So topic one is the rate of reaction graph and factors affecting reaction rate. This is a guaranteed topic in your exam. It will always be in your exam. So for this topic, you need to know how to draw a graph when the rate changes. They're most probably going to get you a graph with um, for a certain reaction, and they're going to ask you to draw the uh, graph um, when the um, some factor has changed, like the concentration, temperature, and so on. So remember that it's the line is going to be steeper if the rate increases. It's going to be less steep if the rate decreases. Um, the flat part of the uh, graph where or of the line where this is the highest concentration of the product, this is going to be higher final concentration of product if reactant concentration increases. So this is the flat part of the curve or if you use the same concentration of the reactant but you change for example um, a factor that increases the rate like the use of a catalyst or increase the temperature then the you're going to have the same final concentration of the product uh, you need to know how to calculate a rate of reaction from a graph, whether they ask you to calculate this at a certain point, certain time, or calculate the average between two points. Also, you need to know the different factors affecting rate of the reaction with explanation in terms of collision, rate of collision. So something like the temperature, increasing temperature increases the rate, concentration of uh, solutions, the concentration only affects solutions, not gases, but pressure affects gases. This is only for the in case of gases and also increase in the surface area to volume ratio will increase the rate. And finally, the use of the catalyst. You should be able to explain why the use of the catalyst increases the rate of the reaction through the increase um, through um, lowering the activation energy by using or providing an alternative pathway for the reaction with lower activation energy. Topic two, reversible reaction and position of equilibrium. This is again a guaranteed topic in your exam. This is always going to be in your exam. So for a reversible reaction, you need to know what is meant by equilibrium. And you need to know the different factors affecting the position of the equilibrium. These are the temperature. Remember that you need to know which direction is the exothermic reaction and which one is the endothermic reaction. So you can judge whether increasing temperature will affect the yield um, towards the product or it's going to decrease the yield and the position will be toward the reactant. Concentration, increasing concentration, this is for solutions only, and they could ask you about concentration of reactants, increasing concentration of reactants, or increasing concentration of product. And then pressure, this is for gases only. And finally, the use of a catalyst. Remember that the use of the catalyst does not affect the position of equilibrium because it increases the rate of both the forward and the reverse reaction. Topic three is organic chemistry. Of course, organic chemistry is going to be in the exam. However, these are just prediction of what might be in the exam. Hydrocarbons. So writing a balanced equation for complete or incomplete combustion. Try to uh, practice writing these balanced equations. The uh, boiling points and the viscosity of alkanes, the effect of increased size on the boiling point and viscosity, how increasing number of carbon atom increasing these because of the increase in the intermolecular forces of attraction between the molecule. Fractional distillation of crude oil, a very common question in the exam. This wasn't in a last year exam and most probably will be in the exam this year. Cracking as well, uh, one of the common questions in the exam and hasn't been in last year exam. So they might, might ask you to complete an equation for cracking. Remember, the products of cracking is shorter chain hydrocarbon and a small alkene. And they could ask you as well about the conditions for cracking high temperature, steam or catalyst. And then they um, 
but ask you as well about the test for double bond. So alkenes reaction has been in the exam for two years now, and most probably this is going to be in your exam this year. So you should know the different addition reactions for alkenes and the test for double bond, which is the bromine water test. Organic chemistry as well, alcohols, carboxylic acid, and esters, very common in the exam. So fermentation of glucose hasn't been in the exam for a few years now. And they, for fermentation of glucose, they would ask you about the product and the optimum conditions for the uh, fermentation. And then the structure formula of carboxylic acid functional group. Um, and remember that this is the functional group for the carboxylic acid, which is the double bond between the carbon and oxygen, and then the single bond between the oxygen uh, and the carbon, the uh, hydroxyl group or the OH group. Also, the acid properties of carboxylic acid. So just remember what are the um, properties or what are the chemical reaction for acids, and you can apply that to uh, carboxylic acids as well. And then a reaction between an acid and an alcohol will give you an ester. This is what you need to know about esters, how to name the ester. Remember naming ester with the first part of the name comes from the alcohol that gives you the ester and the second part comes from the carboxylic acid itself. Polymers in organic chemistry is a very common question and it's almost definite that there will be a question about um, polymers. So you should know how to draw addition polymer from an alkene, regardless what is the structure of alkene, how to draw the addition polymer, remove the double bond, draw two new single bonds, and then open the brackets with the letter N. To be able also to identify a repeating unit of any polymer, they could give you any polymer, something that you haven't seen before maybe, and ask you to circle the repeating unit for the polymer. Also, you should be able to name the small molecule product of condensation polymer, which is usually water. And then naturally occurring polymers. Remember, naturally occurring polymers are cellulose. Cellulose and the unit, the repeating unit for cellulose or the monomer for cellulose is sugar. And then DNA, the nucleotide, and then the proteins, this is the amino acids. Chemical analysis. Chemical analysis will always be in the test. So they will always ask you to identify gases, um, anions, or cations. So my advice to you is to revise all chemical tests for gases, for anions, and for cations. My prediction for this year, and this is just my prediction, that there will be a question with several tests and the uh, results of these tests, and they ask you to identify either the cation or the anion in different compounds with unknown identity. So um, also one of the things that hasn't been in the exam for quite a few years now is the difference between pure substance and formulation, how to identify whether a substance is pure or not by measuring the uh, melting point and boiling point. And the formulation is a mixture of substances with a certain uh, quantities that serves a certain purpose. Um, one of the chemical tests, most probably chemical tests that will show up in the exam is the chemical test for sulfate ion, anion, uh, the flame test, which is very common. Almost every single test, there will be a flame test. And also the sodium hydroxide test for cations. Uh, the ones that have been in the exam lately are iron and aluminium. Uh, so these are the most probably going to be in your test this exam. Uh, also, if paper chromatography comes in the exam, then this is probably going to be to plan an experiment. Uh, paper chromatography has been in the exam uh, in 2023, and it's not common that paper chromatography is in every single uh, test, but probably if it shows up, then it's going to be different from last year um, tests where they ask you have to calculate the RF values, so probably they're going to ask you to plan an experiment this time. Topic 7, gases in the atmosphere. So uh, carbon footprint hasn't been in the exam for quite a few years, so they might ask you about the carbon footprint, the meaning and how to reduce carbon footprint. Uh, greenhouse gases and the effect of greenhouse gases on the average Earth temperature. 
and also the atmospheric pollutants from fuel. Topic eight, using resources. This is the final topic in your uh, um, specification for AQA, and it has a lot of topics. It's very difficult to predict which one exactly is gonna be in the exam, but most probably, or my prediction is the HIPAA process. HIPAA process is a very common topic that shows in the exam because they, it allows them as well to ask you about the different factors affecting the position of the equilibrium. And maybe they will ask you also about making ammonia in the lab and to compare between these two. Polymers hasn't been in the exam for a few years now, so they might ask you about thermosoftening and thermosetting uh, plastics and high density and low density polymers. Also corrosion and rusting and how to prevent rusting. This hasn't been in the exam uh, maybe since 2019. So this is uh, probably it's gonna show up in the exam this year. Aluminium and magnesium also might show up in the exam or what you need to do to know about aluminium that it, um, um, it's covered with a layer of aluminium oxide which protects aluminium from further corrosion and magnesium is the alloy of aluminium with magnesium. And then the composite material, the composite material you just need to know about the reinforcement and matrix. It has two components, reinforcement and matrix. And then potable water, potable water, the um, last time potable water came in the exam, they um, didn't ask about how to get the potable water from uh, fresh resources or uh, from salty water. So probably this is gonna be in your exam this year. So you should know the process of getting potable water from fresh water and also how to get potable water from salty water.